Hola, muchas gracias Andrés. <laughs> um, yo soy, um, I'm going to speak about los celos, in English, jealousy. So, can I see everybody raise their hand for a moment, please? Okay. Okay, everybody, even up there, raise your hand, please. Now, please keep your hands up if you have felt the emotion of jealousy. If not, put it down. Okay. <laughs> so jealousy is a very basic universal emotion in all of our brain circuits for humankind. So um, why am I talking to you today about jealousy? So uh, full disclosure, <laughs> Andres called me up and he says, please Luann, come speak to us about jealousy in the 22nd century. So I'm not sure why he asked me. I feel like maybe he was hoping jealousy would disappear in the next hundred years, Andres. <laughs> so pay close attention. Um, we need to know first why jealousy exists and what's the biological purpose of jealousy? Is there a difference in males and females? Okay, for you males, Mother Nature only has one purpose for you on Earth. You are supposed to search out fertile females and impregnate them. Finished. <laughs> but for human males, you must stick around for a reason because we humans stand upright. We walk upright and we have very narrow pelvises. And the large heads of babies have a hard time going through the narrow birth canal, which means that we must give birth, we females must give birth to very helpless infants. And we need extra help for the first two to three years to help the, the baby survive. So if you males want to get your DNA and your genes into the next generation and have them survive, you need to stick around and help make sure that that baby survives. But I want to have all the men in the audience put their hand up again, just for a minute, please. Okay, now. I want you to only keep your hand up if you, male, would stay and would want to stay and raise a baby that you knew was not your DNA or your genes or was suspicious, okay? Okay, a few altruistic uh, males out there. <laughs> so, this is where jealousy becomes adaptive for the male because you need to make sure that the DNA in that baby is yours. So you must guard the female and make sure that she doesn't go with any other males. You re relentlessly make sure that she stays true to you. So if you even suspect another male is going to sneak in, you need to have the brain circuits in the male brain trigger jealousy rage, readiness to fight, and fend off the other male. So, does that sound like a good job for you, for your brain circuits? So males, you must guard the female if you want to make sure the genes are yours. Now females, we have another goal. Mother Nature has given us a goal too, to get our DNA into the next generation, right? But we know already that the baby we have is our DNA. We may not know who the father is for sure, but 
So because the human infants, again, are born so helpless, we females need another devoted adult to help us protect and feed the baby and ourselves for the first two to three years to have survival of the baby. So the female goal is to keep the male around, to keep him from abandoning us. So we have to fend off other females and keep them from stealing our man. In English, we say to keep them from stealing our meal ticket. <laughs> so if she suspects him of becoming interested in another woman, her brain circuits, we will trigger jealousy and rage, and we will do whatever it takes to manipulate our man to stay with us and to fight off the other female. Okay. So uh, this jealousy in men and women, as we know it today, is like this. The men need to make certain that the baby is his and carrying his DNA before he wants to invest time and energy taking care of it. And women, we need to make sure that we deliver and care for our helpless infant and keep the man close with us to help us. Okay. Andres, here's your part here. But what if the whole game changed? What if the rules of Mother Nature's game changed? So one hint is that the game has already changed. I'll tell you why. So in the 1990s, how many of you know about DNA testing, DNA testing of the baby for paternity to show who the father is, right? So now, men have no question. If you want to know if that baby is yours, you just get the DNA test, no question. Now he can know for sure that that baby is his, and he can stay if it's his own DNA. So I want the men to know that basically the biological purpose of jealousy in the male brain is finished. The mate guarding and jealousy, the reason for that biologically is over because of the new technology. The question is, how long will it now take this useless emotion, jealousy, to persist in the male brain circuits? Okay, Andres, hang on for a minute. I'll come to you in a minute, the male. Let's get back to the male. So what has changed for the female? Mother Nature's game has also changed for us because in the past 20 years, women no longer need a man to get pregnant. We just go down to the sperm bank, pay for our sperm. We go back and, you know, we have the baby. We also have medical care to help us with safe deliveries, help the baby survive. We can earn our own money, pay for the food and shelter for the baby. The government programs help us with child care. So many things have changed. And so women don't need to keep the man around. Really. So, women, our biological purpose for jealousy is basically gone forever. Free at last. <laughs> okay, the question now is how long will this useless emotion and behavior persist in the female brain circuits? It takes tens of thousands of years for our genes to change. So, Andres, I'm very sorry, but very unlikely that our brain circuits for jealousy will change in the next 100 years, maybe 10,000 years. But the game-changing advances in genetic testing, reproductive technology, medical care, employment that I just discussed, basically have changed Mother Nature's mating game and jealousy forever. So Andres, don't despair though. I have a surprise for you. Um, biotechnology has come to your rescue. Some of you may know that there are already chemicals on the market that can change or prevent the feelings of jealousy from forming or erase them, that emotion of jealousy forever, and these could soon be on the pharmacy shelves. So we neuropsychiatrists have been giving drugs like testosterone blockers, like Lupron, 
antidepressants like Prozac and others, and dopamine and endorphin blockers like naloxone to block the feeling of jealousy in the brain circuits. So the good news, Andres, is technological advances in the drug development have already made it possible to get rid of jealousy even before genetic evolution kicks in. Ah, ah, but the bad news. Next. These drugs also get rid of the feeling of romantic love. Que lastima. But we have indeed changed the game, Mother Nature's game now forever, of jealousy in terms of its biological purpose. And I want to thank you, Andres, for inviting me very much to speak briefly about jealousy in the 22nd century. And I hope it's not too much of a disappointment to you. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Yeah, gracias. Okay. Go on, thank you. Hello. Okay, question. Okay, question. I'll take questions. Is it true that there is now like a spray that if your significant other is sleeping, you put it in their nose and she or he will be in love with you forever? The love is... hormone, the love hormone. It's called oxytocin, not oxycontin, oxytocin. Do you sell it? Hormone? No, it's, no. You can sell it. Um, it can be very, very expensive in its most pure form, right? There are many research projects with it, especially in schools of economics. It, if you give the spray to somebody and the financial advisor says, I want you to spend lots of money on it, the, the customer will trust the financial advisor even more, 50% more, and invest 50% more money, more trust, so just in a, that way, but also more love if you give the nasal spray. You can also do it by getting massage. It releases normally by doing okay. Could massage. Could you please teach me how? No, I'm just kidding. Thank you very much. <laughs> un aplauso, por favor, para Loan y para okay. su esposo, Muchas que gracias. está aquí, Samuel Barondis, también un gran intelectual. Right. Viva México. And gracias. And we have books for free. Ah, first for free for Loan, muy amablemente, nos está regalando cinco libros. Al término de este bloque, ella va a firmar libros. Y las cinco primeras personas que lleguen les va a regalar uno de sus libros del cerebro masculino o del cerebro femenino. Thank okay, you again. Un gracias. aplauso, gracias.